Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to the second part of the art haul video. So I uploaded a video yesterday sharing all of the different art supplies I bought throughout the month of October. Um, there were quite a few different ones, <laughs> quite a few exciting ones that I can't wait to try. So today we're just going to sit here and have a really calm, long swatching session, which you know how much I love. and. Judging by your comments, I think you love too. <laughs> so hopefully you're gonna enjoy this. Um, we have lots of different things to swatch from um, colored pencils to the new graphite matte pencils to neo colors to gouache paint to acrylic paint and markers. There are all sorts of things. So I think what I'm gonna start with are the neo color crayons because I bought a few of those. Um, I think we have six here, yes. We have six, four of which are greens, um, and one night blue and one sepia. So I think what I'm gonna start with, because I'm kind of curious about this, we have two here. One is the Neocolor one, and one is the Neocolor two. The Neocolor two are water soluble, Neocolor one aren't, but they're both in light olive. So I think what I'm gonna do is swatch these because they look slightly different and just see what they actually look like. So which one's this? This is the Neo Color one. So this isn't water soluble. Feels really nice. I love the way Neo Colors feel when you use them. And they're great for layering over the top of colored pencil and paint. I often use them in my mixed media pieces. So let's try the Neo Color 2. Yet yeah, they are slightly different. I'll hold the swatches up to the camera so you can see them a little bit better um, when I've done a few of them. But hopefully, even from there, you can see that the Neo Color 2 is much more of a yellow green. So, this really is the color I was after. Although the Neo Color 1 version is nice too, but it's interesting how they're both called light olive and yet one of them is much more yellow than the other. I'd actually like to just add a bit of water to that, seeing as that is the Neo Color 2. Um, and just see, let me get a brush. We'll see how that looks when some water is added. Oh, that's nice. Oh, it looks like even more of a zingy yellow green kind of lightens it a bit I like that oh this is a good color this was the color I was aiming for I kind of like it like that where you can see how it looks dry and wet I'm gonna do that with some of the others are these all neo color two I have here yep those two are that one is and that one is yep they all are okay so let's do I think the next one along we'll try the chromium oxide green That's a really pretty colour. Greens together are the most inspiring thing. We'll just wet that one too to have a look. It's really nice how these wet actually. They feel really good when you add water. They're really smooth. Oh, that's beautiful. So it does look a bit lighter again, like that one did. Um, that's really nice if you want more of a subtle look. I'm only now getting into the Neo Color 2s, actually. Previously, I only had the Neo Color 1s. Oh, this is a lovely dark, almost like a gray green dusky <laughs> so that's called moss green just add a bit of water to that one yeah I really want to experiment with these more as I said I've only recently bought some for the first time um, I think they'd be great to actually take out on location. So I love the fact that I could just perhaps have one of those water brushes 
um, which I don't have at the moment, by the way. Um, I keep meaning to get one because uh, I think it would be great for location. Um, and then basically I could just take these, so easily transportable, and use them almost like paint, which is really nice. Okay, I'm going to try the night blue. Oh, that's a lovely colour. That's actually um, darker than I expected. That's really gorgeous. Oh, well, look how light that looks when you swatch it. Turns into a lighter blue. I mean, it still has a lot of depth to it. I mean, it's still fairly dark, but it's interesting how they just turn into a slightly lighter version of the dry colour. I think this is such a versatile medium. So this one is sepia. I always love to have sepia because I think it's um, a really useful colour to have in your palette. Swatched out, that has a really nice softness to it. Yeah, love those. Really loving these greens across the top here. So the only thing is that one's not water soluble, but it doesn't matter. I often use them just as um, a dry media to layer across the top of, um, or rather layer over the top of pen and colored pencil, and they'll even go over the top of paint. So they're great if you want to work in mixed media and you like building up your layers. Right, so I'm really keen to do the pencils next. So I think what I'm gonna do is first of all have a look at the Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils because I haven't used these before these are the first ones I've ever bought and I believe we have six different colors here yep so I'm gonna try these um, they are are they water soluble no those ones aren't doesn't look like they are okay so we'll just swatch these out um, actually I'm gonna start Let's start with the night blue because this is also night blue um, and I want to see how similar or different they are. Yeah, this is definitely lighter. Okay, so my first impression of these pencils is that they're quite a hard pencil. They feel quite nice to work with. I'd like to see actually how they layer. So the colour of this one actually looks more like the night blue neo colour when it's swatched out rather than dry. Dry, the neo colour is definitely darker. But yeah, that seems to be layering quite nicely. Oh, they're a really firm pencil. They feel quite different to something like Luminance, for example, which are the ones I'm used to. Let's try another colour. Let's go for the greyish black and see how that feels. Oh, this is nice. Okay, so I thought this was going to be a little bit like a Payne's Grey. And I would say it's actually warmer than a Payne's Grey. It doesn't have that real blue undertone. Um, it's a very nice dark grey. I love using grey in my work. Green and grey together or pink and grey. Looks so fantastic. Let me just have a closer look at that. I'm going to hold them up properly for you in a minute, but yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's not really like a Payne's Grey, but that's a really lovely dark grey. Okay, the next one I'm curious about is the um, bluish pale. 
Let's see how pale this is. That's a pretty colour. Yeah, they do feel really quite different to use than the luminance. I think I like them though. That's a lovely colour. Um, I have this one which is called Ash Grey. Don't know how much that's going to show up. It's a nice neutral. Reminds me a little bit of um, the paint by Liquitex called Parchment. It's that kind of colour. But yeah, very pale, so it's quite hard to get it. I'm trying to press quite hard to get it to show up for you. I think you'd have to use these quite a lot to actually wear down the points, whereas with luminance, I feel like the points wear down very quickly. Okay, let's try this really pretty colour. This is Granite Rose. Oh, this is like a really nice vintage pink. It's funny because going by the colour on the pencil, I thought this would be a little bit paler. A little bit more of like a sugared almond kind of pink, if you know what I mean. But this is nice. I love vintage pinks. See, vintage pink and grey. I'll just add a little bit there. It's really nice with that grey. And also, actually, with this ash grey, they're kind of a nice trio. Okay, so the final Pablo we have is this one. This is light olive. And that's a gorgeous colour for landscapes. And yeah, it's very similar, isn't it, to the light olive up here. I would say it's probably, it's actually somewhere in between the Neo Colour 1 and the Neo Colour 2 light olive. So these are all by Karen Dash, um, these materials. But yeah, very similar, really nice. I'm sure I'll use that one a lot. But yeah, greys and greens, gorgeous together. If you mix grey in with lots of different shades of green, I love that. Okay, so they're interesting pencils. I would say they feel very different, the type of pencils that I would usually use. So I tend to use Luminance, um, Derwent drawing pencils, Derwent light fast pencils. Um, I have some Holbeins as well. Um, what else do I have? I do have something else, I can't think of it off the top of my head. But these are much harder than the pencils I would usually use, but really like the colours and um, look forward to experimenting more with those in my work as well. So let's just hold those up so you can have a good look at those colours before I move on. It's that really pretty pink there. Love the ash grey because this does remind me of parchment by Liquitex. Okay, I think what we'll do is we'll continue swatching by brand. So next I'm going to swatch the light fast. <laughs> the only thing I don't like about the light fast, I love these pencils by the way, they are one of my favourite brands and um, ranges. They stick these sticky labels on them which I then have to get off and sometimes the stickiness just goes everywhere. So that's the only thing I don't like. Apart from that, Derwent and Light Fast are absolutely brilliant. So let's start with the foliage. As I said um, before, I'm just basically trying to gather up as many greens as I possibly can at the moment because I'm using it so much in my work and I'm really inspired by it. 
but that's a really nice colour. I'm not sure I have anything that's quite like this. This swatch is a little bit um, squidged up because of those smaller squat, uh, the smaller swatches, <laughs> smaller swatches in there. Um, okay, so next one is Olive Earth. Yeah, I thought this would be a much more um, of a brown green, and it is. Now this reminds me of something. What is it? I have a pencil that's a little bit like this. It might be one of the other Derwent Lightfasts, actually. It's lovely, kind of slightly khaki-ish green. And the other one I got was the Blue Violet. So I don't tend to use purple all that much in my work, but I do like these really dark violets. I think they are really useful for night landscapes in particular. The Lightfast are much softer pencils, so they certainly feel like it to me than the Pablo pencils. But I'm getting quite a collection of Lightfasts now. Um, they remind me a bit of the Caran d'Ache Luminance, um, which are one of my all-time favourite pencils, if not my favourite pencil. So I think next we'll go with, I think all of these, apart from one, yeah, are the Holbein Artist Coloured Pencil. So let's have a look at, I'm curious about Sky Mist actually. Um, this one was, so I'm just checking that. <laughs> camera was on. I had a terrible thought for a moment that perhaps it wasn't, but it is. <laughs> so yeah, somebody recommended this to me, so thank you. Oh yeah, this is nice. That's an interesting blue. This is the type of blue I love, because it's kind of got this muted quality to it. It looks slightly earthy which you don't often kind of think of blues as being, do you? But yeah, it's got this lovely sort of, I don't know, slightly greenish kind of look to it. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this might be a new favorite. I didn't expect it to look quite like that because if you see, it looks just sort of like a brighter blue from the color um, on the pencil. But that's beautiful. I'll hold them up again in a minute so you can have a close look. But let's also try the Ash Rose. I'm going to swatch that down here because we have that pink up there. So I also um, bought in this haul the Ash Rose Holbein Acrylic Gouache Paint, which I'd never had before and I'd wanted it for a long time. And so I kind of have the pencil version here. And that is beautiful. It's another sort of dusky, vintage looking pink, which I really like. So next up is Autumn Leaf. Where am I gonna swatch that? Maybe I'll just go here. Oh, this is a nice orange. This is slightly like, I think a Mars orange. There's a Mars orange in the Derwent drawing pencil range. Um, and it kind of reminds me of that. Slightly muted, not a bright orange. It really is the color of the leaves that I'm seeing outside at the moment in the garden. I might actually just film out of the window for you um, front and back and show you in a moment what it looks like because I'm filming this on the 30th of October and the trees are now only really starting to change here in Surrey seems quite late this year actually so yeah I'll film that in a minute and we'll just insert the footage and um, 
and I'll show you what it looks like out of the window but yeah I'm seeing lots of leaves that colour now especially on our American oak tree as well in the front garden. Um, right so let's try these three greens that I have here um, and we'll start with a forest green That's a lovely dark blue green. I love seeing all of these together. Reminds me a little bit of dark sap green, the luminance pencil, but just slightly, a, sli a slightly lighter version, I think. And then we'll go for misty green. This is another one. Um, that I have as a paint. So I have the Holbein acrylic gouache paint in misty green. Um, I love it. It's very, very pale, sort of almost grey green. This one is slightly darker, I think. I think the pencil version is slightly darker. But still, a really nice, subtle, quite natural looking green. And then finally, we're gonna go with olive yellow. I seem to have bought quite a few olive yellows, or light olives, as they call the Caran d'Ache version. Yeah, this one is almost identical, isn't it, to the Neo Color 2 light olive. It's nice to have a pencil version and a pastel version, actually. They look lovely together. Gorgeous palette of greens. So finally in this batch we have the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura Earth Green. Now this is water soluble. This is like a watercolor pencil. So I'm going to swatch it dry and then we'll see how it looks wet. I have several of their earth greens. I have the Pitt Artist Brush Pen, the watercolor marker, I think it's called, the Albrecht Dura watercolor marker, and also um, their Polychromos pencil in earth green. It's one of my favorite colors ever. So curious to see this one. Oh, this feels really nice. Okay, I'm loving the texture of this pencil. And I'm loving this earth green. <laughs> I know I love this color anyway. I'm trying to think, is this darker than the Polychromos version? Quite possibly, it is a little bit, I think. Oh, they have a nice... I do have a nice texture. Okay, I'm interested to see how this looks when we add some water. Let's just do it like we did with the Neo Color. So I leave half of it, or a little section of it rather, <laughs> dry and then swatch this out. Now I'm seeing like it still has some pencil marks there. But this could be because I'm swatching um, or drawing rather on some textured paper. So I wonder whether on a different paper, because I found this with the Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle pencils the other week, that they were leaving some marks and I think it's just the paper. Because when I tried them on a different paper, better quality paper because <laughs> this one isn't. I've got a cheap paper here to swatch on. When I was trying them on this paper I had the same problem where you could still see some of the pencil marks when I swatched them out because they're also a watercolour pencil. Um, but when I tried them on a more expensive paper I didn't have that problem. So the paper really does have an effect on how art materials perform. Um, okay so I'll hold these up and we'll just have a closer look at these and then I think I'm going to move on to the polycolour pencils and the graphite matte pencils. The 
So before we move on to the other pencils, I wanted to show you how the garden's looking. Let's see if we can zoom in over there because I want to show you that tree. So do you see how it's starting to change now? And things are starting to show their real autumn colours. We have a few evergreens as well mixed in, so it isn't all autumnal. So I think the next thing we will try are these um, Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor Pencils. Now somebody, um, I can't remember who, I'm sorry, um, said to me that these would be a good pencil for me to try. I think they said they were really good for layering. Um, so I went on to Jackson's to check them out and I found this gorgeous set with lots of warm and cool greys in. And uh, yeah, I thought this looked really good. I can't remember how much they cost exactly, but they actually weren't that expensive for 12 pencils in a nice tin. Now I'm going to really struggle <laughs> to get the cardboard sleeve off, aren't I? This came wrapped in plastic, which I've already removed because I knew I would struggle. So that's what the tin looks like. That's rather nice. And this is how they look inside. Oh, I'm loving this sort of matte um, end to the pencil here, showing the color. And this inside says it has a quality test number. For complaints, please notify the quality test number. <laughs> okay, so that's great. What I love about German art supplies is that they're always great quality. So um, I think these are probably going to be as well. Let's swatch them out. Um, maybe I'll just start at this end. I think this might be white, so I don't think, how can I get these out? <laughs> I don't think we're gonna be able to see very much. Yes, it is white. Let's just move that as well. And put those there, so hopefully. Can you see? Yes, you can see them there in shot. Okay, so I'm just going to continue along this way. They feel really nice, actually. Love that design. But no, you're not going to be able to see white on this paper. <laughs> they feel very nice. I actually was going to read something before we go any further on the back here. Um, it says an assortment of 12 hard and soft grey tones, including white and black for graphic artists and designers. Like all other Rembrandt polycolour pencils, also the grey tones meet the highest demand for colour brilliancy and light fastness, as well as water resistance and smoothness of the oil-based lead. Right, so they're oil-based, not wax-based. Um, let's do this one. This is light grey. Let's see if this shows up. Oh, it does. <laughs> I really like the feel of these. They're very creamy. And that is a nice grey. I really love cool greys. If they have a hint of blue in them. I love that. Oh, I'm really liking the feel of these. So, so far, I'm impressed. So what's this one? This is called Silver Grey. If I remember during the editing, I'll put the price of these on the screen for you. Because I seem to remember, I thought they were a really good deal. And if you're into greys, like me, you might like these. Um, this is medium grey. 
Oh, these are lovely. Do you know what they remind me of? <laughs> I've got it here actually because I've been using it this week to work on a new piece. This is my crema watercolour set that I bought. If you, any of you remember, I think a lot of you came to my channel through an art haul I did in March, I think it was, of this year. And it was called the Absolutely Massive Art Hall. <laughs> and this was part of that art hall. And I love this little set of watercolours so much. They're just in shades of um, white, grey and black. So we have the warm greys across the top there the cool greys and black across the bottom. Aren't they lovely? Um, they remind me of these pencils. And yeah, also a German company. So well done, Germany. How many German subscribers do I have? Let me know. <laughs> if you're German, let me know. <laughs> um, right, so that was medium grey. And now we're getting into the darker ones. I'm just having a little, oh, there we go. I need to press that end. Okay, this is dark grey. I'm just going to go under here actually and we'll go along the other way. Wow, these are so nice. I just want to try something in a second. Let's just see. How that layers over the lighter one. Ooh, nice. Should we see how they layer over something else? So that was the Holbein pencil, wasn't it? And these ones up here were the Pablo. Ooh, it's layering really nicely over the Pablo. But yeah, it's layering over everything. Let's just try, um, <laughs> see if it layers over the Neo color. Nope, it won't layer over the dry neo colour, but it will layer over the swatched out neo colour. Nice. Okay, and this one is black. Hmm. Okay, so we'll start on these ones. This is light grey warm. Oh, that one's a bit crumbly. Just get rid of that. Oh, it's a lovely neutral colour. And the next one is Silver Grey Warm. And then we have Medium Grey Warm. Should I just do that up here? <laughs> I'm going to fill every bit of space on this paper. Oh, that one feels really oily. They are nice colours, aren't they? Oh, loving these. And then dark grey warm. So that has a real brown tone to it. Nice, a little bit like sepia. And then two more. We have Black Soft. Yeah, this is a darker black than the other one, I think. Oh, it's very crumbly. <laughs> Lots of little bits coming off this one. And then finally, Black Hard. So how does this differ? Oh, it's a slightly lighter black. In fact, I would say that's more of a grey, really. But lovely warm colour. They feel very nice to work with. Um, looking forward to experimenting more with those in my work. I'm going to hold these up so you can have a closer look at the colours. 
I just realised with that one I went over where I'd done the white. But it did layer really well and somebody told me these layer well. So yeah, you have these ones that look um, very warm and very brown and then the bluer, colder colours as well. Really very nice. So let's try these Faber-Castell Pit Graphite Matte Pencils. So this says, ultra matte graphite lay down for reduced reflection on paper. Highest colour density for maximum depth effect, smooth graphite application. Um, the reason I don't use graphite pencils very often is because I don't like the shine. So very excited to try these and to see whether they really are as matte as they say they are. <laughs> so we'll have a look. They have 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, 10B and 12B. And I love this little case they come in, this little tin rather. So let's have a look at this. Very excited to see what these are like. Oh, super smooth. That's how they feel. <laughs> we'll have to see if we can see any reflection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch more heavily on that section. We'll swatch them all and then we'll have a look at them, see whether we can see any reflection at all. Well, they feel nice. They feel like, I would say, a cross between a colored pencil and a graphite pencil. So you can see they kind of have a graphite colour, they're not um, like really black. So the next one is going to be the 8B. Oh, we can get a nice dark, heavy coverage with that one. B. I don't think I actually have ever owned a 10B pencil. And finally the 12B. So you have to excuse the <laughs> tinkling sound. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. But that's our ring um, security camera system um, whenever anyone goes past like that <laughs> it um, it makes a sound it's on Dominic's iPad I might have to go and move that in a minute oh we're gonna keep getting interrupted by the tinkly sound <laughs> okay well, they feel really nice. As I said, they're like a cross between a colored pencil and a graphite pencil. So I'm gonna have a look and see whether I can see. I'm gonna just move off camera a bit because I have the light to the side of me and I'm gonna see whether I can see any reflection. And do you know what? They actually have about the same level of reflection as the colored pencils. So that is incredible. Have I got a graphite pencil here? Oh, I've got this one, the Blackwing, the Palomino Blackwing 602. Let's just swatch a graphite pencil um, and just see how much more shiny. I don't know whether it's gonna show up for you on camera. So I apologize for that in advance, but I can tell you what I can see here. So I'll do it in the same way I swatched those ones. Okay, let's have a look. Yep, that's shiny. And I would say that the Pitt Graphite Matte Pencils 
are not shiny. Well, with any pencil, when you're laying it down quite heavily, you'll see some level of sheen to it. But I would say that this, the normal graphite, is shiny and these have the same level of sheen as a coloured pencil. So I'm really happy about that. We found a graphite pencil that doesn't have that super shiny look to it. I'm going to bring this up close so you can have a look at everything. Um, you probably won't be able to see the shine, but take my word for it, um, or rather lack of shine, <laughs> take my word for it, they are actually really quite matte. So there are these ones along here. Can see slightly we have a bit of shine there there's the normal graphite oh you can see the shininess if I tilt it like that and do you see with these ones where I've gone really heavily on the darkest one you can see a tiny bit but look on the other ones they're pretty matte I really like the depth of them as well yep I'm impressed with those I think they've actually managed to make a pencil that doesn't reflect in the same way graphite does. Maybe this one very, very slightly, but it's nowhere near what the graphite is. And we're only comparing them against one type of graphite pencil. So yeah, really impressed with those. First impressions, very good. So before we get on to the paint swatching, what was that? <laughs> I heard a noise out in the hallway. Um, I know this sounds a bit funny because it is actually um, almost Halloween. Tomorrow is Halloween. We have had some very strange activity in the house last night. Um, we heard something on the middle floor. Dominic and I are on the top floor of this house. We live in a Victorian country house. Um, oh, I said I was going to move that tinkling thing, didn't I? <laughs> haven't sorry I'll do that for the paint swatching section but yeah I just want to tell you quickly that um, last night Dominic and I were in bed watching a film on the laptop and we had the film up quite loud but we could hear quite clearly something very loud on the middle floor Dominic actually thought we might have an intruder so he went to check it out <laughs> and um, he went to have a look he searched the house and yeah there was nobody here um i think i was saying that we live in a victorian country house before the ring system thing went off again um i think that's just dominic or his mum so don't worry about that <laughs> but um yeah he went down to check because what we heard sounded like either furniture being dragged or i don't know someone moving something really heavy it was louder than the film we had on and we both heard it and then there was nothing down there. But we did um, put a ring camera on the middle floor after this, and we had some really interesting orbs flying around. Um, we get that quite a lot in this house, and we didn't know we had them until we had the security cameras installed. Anyway, this is all another, another thing. Anyway, I just heard a noise out in the hallway. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Let's just carry on, we'll carry on regardless. Okay, let's start with this. We're gonna swatch some of the, or we're gonna swatch all of the pens. Um, I'm flustered now, I'm thinking this off. <laughs> anyway, okay. We've got the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pen in May Green. I own quite a lot of Pit pens, really love them. Some people love them, some people don't. I'm one of the people who loves them. <laughs> I really like them for layering, that's a lovely, sort of grass green almost. What I use them for is um, I layer with my mixed media pieces. I maybe start with um, these pens and then I'll work over the top of them in colored pencil or neo color. Um, they're really good for layering in that way. And I love the colors they come in as well. So this one's chromium green opaque. So that's a lovely darker green. And these could provide a nice base for fields in a landscape or something like that. I never just use them on their own. They're always used in mixed media pieces. I swear I keep hearing things out there. I just heard something else. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, we'll carry on. Right. Um, 
this Faber-Castell uh, Brett-Dura watercolour marker in cold grey, what's that, V1 is 6, isn't it? Cold grey 6. Um, so this should be a really quite dark one. Oh, that's stiff. <laughs> so they have a brush tip, which I really like, because you can cover a large area very quickly. Look at that. Depth of colour is really nice. And then the other side is a bullet tip. And so you can do... Sort of slightly more precise marks with that. But yeah, that's going to be a useful colour for me. I haven't got um, a grey in these, I don't think. And I love using these. Um, I took them on location with me um, and sat in the car in a forest drawing the trees. Um, and they were fantastic to take out because obviously they're like a watercolour but you don't have all of the mess of watercolour so great for um, taking on location. So let's have a look at the three Molotow markers I have here. So I'm getting quite a collection of these because I'm really enjoying working with them. I've already given these a really good shake. You have to shake them up because um, a bit like FW acrylic inks as you'll see in a minute they do actually separate a bit, so you have to give them a good shake before you use them. And I haven't used these before, so we need to just pump them a bit to get the ink flowing, or rather the paint flowing. So there you go. Can you see that? And that's a lovely colour. Oh, really natural yellow. This is actually called Sahara Beige Pastel. It's really nice. Love that. I love a sort of muted yellow. Um, and this one is called Hazelnut Brown, which I really liked. So again, haven't used that yet, so we'll just give it a little pump. And that's a really nice dark, rich brown. They're not liking this paper. The only thing with these markers, some papers they seem to love and other papers you get these little kind of, um, the little bits of paper, it's sort of pilling, um, which is a bit annoying, but they do work really, really well if you layer them over other media. So say for example, the um, Neo Colour or the coloured pencil or even paint, you can layer them and we don't have any of this problem. But yeah, some papers they like more than others. So this one again, this one is called Grey Blue Dark. I have, I think, Grey Blue Light. <laughs> you can tell how much I love greys, can't you? Greys and greens. So there, that's a lovely dark colour. Really nice, they'll be a nice addition to my palette of those. So there we go, I'm gonna bring those up close, we'll have a look at those, and then I'm gonna get on to swatching the paints. Okay, so I think that we won't swatch the Acrylic Gouache Titanium White because I've had this many times before and it's not gonna show up on this paper anyway. So I'm gonna put that one aside. That was just a restock for me. So I think I'm gonna start with the normal gouache. So this is like traditional gouache, um, re-wettable and <laughs> I'm hearing stuff out in the hallway again. Um, I don't know what it is. We're going to just assume it's nothing. If I suddenly run out of here in terror, you'll know that I've encountered a ghost. <laughs> but yeah, we do have some quite strange instances, occurrences in this house. <laughs> okay, so I'm starting with the... Holbein Artist Squash in Ash Blue. Oh, look at that colour. Now this, my friends, is what's known as a sexy colour. I love 
these muted oh look at it it's gorgeous oh my word muted dark um, moody colors like this are oh, so nice and if a color can be sexy this color is that is beautiful I love this um, let me just bring that up so you can see it more closely I mean obviously it's still wet we'll have to look at them again when they're dry but um, I love this colour in the Holbein acrylic gouache as well, um, the ash blue, so that's why I got the traditional gouache version as well, because I like working in all of these different mediums. Um, this one is grey number three. Oh, that's lovely, look at that. That's quite a warm grey. And very dark, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I don't need to mix up a grey like this anymore. I now have one already mixed. That's so nice, gosh, they go nicely together too, don't they? And a little seems to go a very long way. They're very highly pigmented. That's gorgeous, right, okay. The next ones I think I'm going to swatch are um, these, these are the Shin Han Professional Designers Gouache. These are new um, on Jackson's. I think they've only recently started stocking them and when they introduced them the other week, they had them on a very good offer. So that's why I decided to get three greens. Let's get another little dish so we can squeeze a little bit of those ones out. I'm going to start with Shadow Green Pale purely because I'm loving the name of this colour. And oh, look at this. Oh, there's a bit of separation with the binder. We'll just squeeze that out to try and get, there we go. Um, you can, if your paints do that by the way, if the binder separates from the pigment, just get a cocktail stick, which I don't have with me at the moment, and you can dip it in and kind of mix it up in the tube. It's a little tip for you if you haven't heard of that before. <laughs> um, I learned of that fairly recently. So this is reminding me very much, this shadow green pale looks like the Holbein Ash Green. Let's swatch it out and have a look. Oh, this is a really nice colour. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next row. Oh, that is so beautiful. Wow, these paints feel really nice. They weren't very expensive, um, even at full price. The quality feels lovely. Beautiful colour, really nice muted, slightly slightly blue-green, very nice, does look incredibly like ash green, so loving that one. Okay, this one is dark green. Whoops. <laughs> oh, these feel lovely to work with. They're going on really nice and evenly as well. Oh, I'm impressed with these. My first time trying any Shin Han paints. But yeah. Very impressed. Okay, let's try the moss green. So this is a beautiful yellow green. They make such a nice little mini palette of greens. Ooh. And the colours are quite true to the label as well actually. Oh, 
I'll just show you. We lay them out and you'll be able to see. There we go. Yeah, really impressed with those. Look how even the colours are. I mean, that one I added a bit more water to, so um, it's not looking even on this side. And these also, I think I um, watered them down rather a lot. But um, yeah, very even coverage. And I think if I hadn't added water to that one, that would be the same. So very impressed with the Shin Han Professional Designer's Gouache, in case you want to get some. <laughs> Um, right, the next, right, we've done those, haven't we? I'm just going to move everything out of the way that we've already done. So the next one I'm going to try is this Shin Han Pass. So it's the same company. Now this is a special paint. It's a hybrid of watercolour and gouache that they've come up with. So um, I got this one in Linden Green. I want more colours, <laughs> but they are out of stock at Jackson's at the moment of so many of the colours um, from this range. I think they've been quite popular since they were introduced. So what I'm gonna do is just, we'll try this one and we'll see what it's like. Um, I'm guessing that you can apply it quite heavily and it's like, um, gouache and then you can wash it out like watercolour. So let's see, I'm just going to dry my brush off a bit over there. So, oh this is super bright, look at the colour, wow. I think for my work I might have to tone that down a bit, <laughs> might have to mix it in with something else but um, I'm going to do it here actually. But it might be nice if I'm doing a green landscape to it, just add like a real um, pop of colour, like a really bright zingy green. Yep, I heard something out in the hallway again. Are you hearing those noises by the way? I don't know whether the camera's picking it up. I keep hearing like a, like a <laughs> kind of noise. Right, so yeah, that's covering like gouache. So what we'll do is we'll just add some water, oh whoops, that isn't coming from the paint, that's coming from my dirty paint jar, <laughs> sorry, paint water jar, is that right? Water jar, <laughs> gosh, I think I've been swatching for too long, too much filming of videos and you just end up saying stupid stuff, I noticed that, it's like I'm perfectly fine in everyday life put the camera on and I suddenly lose the ability to speak. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, I like this, look at the effect I can get. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up closer so we can have a look. Okay, so it goes on like gouache there. If you add water, it becomes really transparent like watercolor. So if you water down gouache normally, it's, it can look a bit more watercolory, but it still has that look of gouache. This actually has the look of watercolour. It looks kind of transparent, and I really love the fact that you can get almost two different colours from it. That's impressive. I have to say, I'm very impressed with Shin Han paints. These are the first ones I've ever tried, and I'm loving all of them. Okay, so let's go on to the acrylic gouache, and I have three here. I have the Turner Acryl Gouache in Fresh Green. I think this is going to be another really bright green like that one. Yeah, it's quite similar. But these are not rewettable. So when I use um, acrylic gouache, for those of you who don't know, you can't re-wet it, so don't squeeze out too much because <laughs> you'll waste it because it dries really quickly. Um, you can keep it wet on the palette by just adding a little bit of water if you want to spritz it or something like that, but um, it tends to dry quite quickly. Um, it's really good for layering because if you like to work in thin layers and you want to layer um, paints on top of each other, this is great for that because not only does it dry quickly, but it has the look of gouache, so it dries really like a velvety matte kind of finish. 
but it has the properties of an acrylic in that it's not re-wettable. So you can layer without disturbing the layers beneath um, once they're dry. So this is why I love this paint. I find it really versatile. It's one of my most used paints. And for a long time, I've used the Holbein version. I've recently got into using the Turner acrylic gouache too. So that's why I love those. And let's just swatch this one out. This is called Fresh Green. And I think it is gonna be very, very similar. Oh wow, it's almost, looks almost um, fluorescent, doesn't it? Let's get rid of that. Oh wow, look at that, so yellow as well. Oh, that would add a nice zingy touch to a landscape, wouldn't it? Yeah, so basically it's more yellow than that one. They looked kind of similar when I first um, squeezed it out of the tube, but actually they are quite different. Very, very nice. That would be a good addition. I don't have a green like that in acrylic gouache, so that's really good. Um, right, we're gonna go on to something much more subtle now. Oh, I'm running out of little, um, oh, hold on, I have one here. There we go, it's my last clean one. <laughs> um, okay, let's try the ash yellow. So these are something completely different. They're such lovely muted colors. Um, as I said in the art haul video, I have the ash blue and the ash green acrylic gouache already and they're some of my most used colours and so I thought I would finally get the ash yellow and the ash rose. So this one is very, how would we describe this? Very earthy looking colour. A little bit mustardy. <laughs> Maybe not quite as yellow as mustard. Sometimes it's hard trying to explain, um, or describe rather, describe colours. But that's a lovely natural colour, which will be fantastic for my landscapes. And then, let's have a look at this one. Oh, that's beautiful. It's got a little um, hint of potter's pink about it. Just looking at it like that. I'm gonna have to change this water in a minute, I think. But oh, that's such a nice natural color. Look at that. Yeah, that'll be a really good addition to my palette. And of course you can mix white with them as well and make them a bit lighter. That's why I get through so much white when I'm using gouache. I quite often mix it in with the colours. Okay, so we'll hold those up, have a look, and then I'm going to try the acrylic inks and the acrylic paints. So I got to this stage and I realised it was starting to get dark already. I needed to get outside before the end of the day just to stretch my legs, get a bit of exercise. So I did that and I filmed this little bit of footage while I was walking around the garden. Okay, so it's the next day now and it's actually Halloween. <laughs> so happy Halloween, everyone. I'm just gonna finish watching the last few things from the art hall and they're pretty much all acrylics apart from just two acrylic inks we have here. These need to be shaken up. Um, FW acrylic ink always seems to separate so it always needs a really good shake before you use it. There, that's better. Do that one too. Shall we try these first? I think we should actually. There, 
That looks much better. Um, and then I'll move on to the actual acrylics. I'm just going to pop those over here. Um, and I have several more. Oh yeah, you can see that on camera, can't you? You have several more over there. Okay, let's just do the acrylic inks. Um, I'm going to start with this one, which is peach pink. So they have this little dropper. So you can just put a little bit on your palette. Or you can just work from the bottle, I do that sometimes as well. I have several colours of um, this FW Acrylic Ink by Dayla Rowney. Um, and I really like them. I use the white one most of all. But I haven't used the colours very much recently and I want to get back into using them. So I thought I would add these two extra colours and I'm going to try um, colour mixing as well. I might do that in another video. That's a really pretty colour. Let's just see what that looks like. Watered down. Yeah, that's nice. You get a really subtle look if you water them down. Nice. Okay, let's try this um, quite bright looking green, even though it says it's olive green. Olive greens are usually a bit darker than this, but we'll see what it looks like when we actually swatch it out. Just gonna add a bit more. I really like the little dropper. It's really useful to have that. That's actually a really gorgeous colour. Doesn't look as bright when it's swatched out as it does in the bottle, which I'm quite relieved about <laughs> because I didn't want a really bright sort of, um, I don't know what you call it, sort of slightly acidy kind of slime green. <laughs> so I have these ones that are beautifully fresh and bright, but they're not, um, they're not sort of slime colour. <laughs> this is really nice. I love these when you add water. Um, they just look so subtle and transparent. Really nice. Yeah, I'm happy with those. They'll be good additions to the colours I already have. And I think I might make a separate video about my inks because I think that could be quite interesting. Okay, I'm gonna put those aside, because we know we've done those. And I'm gonna move on to, I think maybe this interesting looking pouch of acrylic. Um, somebody told me in the comments of the art haul video that I posted, um, so I was unsure about these, why they're in a pouch and so on, and why they're called abstract innovative acrylic. Apparently you can get little nozzles um, different shaped nozzles to put on the end here and you can use them straight from the pouch so that sounds like quite an interesting way of doing things and it says no waste on the back here as well anyway sounds interesting I'm just going to see whether we can just perhaps squeeze a bit out onto the paper and see what it looks like is it going to come? <laughs> I don't know whether it is. I've never used one of these before. Oh, yes, something's coming. Okay, we only want a little bit, don't we? Maybe a bit more. There we go. All right, this is a really dark um, green colour. And it's called Burnt Green Earth. So let's give this a go. I think this is going to be a very brownish green. I'm going to use this brush, actually, to just... Brush it out a bit. I would say that's more like a brown with a hint of green really, but that could be really good for my green landscapes like background trees and I'm thinking things in the distance.
I also want to make a video about my acrylic paints because I have quite a few of them now from several different brands and I think it could be an interesting video to have a look at all of those, the different colours I use and my favourite colours out of the batch. <laughs> all of these are really neat and then this one's gone crazy. But I think for the acrylics I am going to swatch them just like that so that we just brush them on and have a look. Okay, next I'm going to try the Liquitex parchment. So I have this in one of their um, paint markers. Really love the colour because it's a really good neutral. And I've never thought about buying the paint before. So it'll be good to have this. You see it's so lovely, it's not too um, it's not too brown, it's not too pink, because some neutrals can kind of um, veer towards another colour, but that is just perfect. I love it. Brilliant base to layer on top of. Gorgeous. Sometimes hard to find a really neutral neutral. <laughs> well, I find it hard anyway. And those two actually look good together. Okay, so the next one is light pink, Liquitex heavy body acrylic again. Ooh, this is a pretty colour. So this is another one that I don't think I've had before. And as I love combining pinks with greys in my work, and I think pink looks really pretty with green. Um, oh, a little goes a long way. <laughs> this is turning into a massive swatch. Um, yeah, I thought this would be useful to have. I could probably make that more muted as well if I added a little bit of Payne's grey or a bit of black. So that could be quite a versatile pink to have. So this one is in Danthrin Blue. Oh, this is a really strong, lovely looking blue. Oh, that's gorgeous, look at that. That's a real night landscape blue. What a gorgeous colour. Love it. It's a bit harder to get the brush strokes out of that one. This one seems to be a bit more transparent. These are very opaque and this one's definitely more transparent. I'm just going to try this um, golden high flow, is it called? Yeah, golden high flow titanium white acrylic. I haven't ever used this before. I have other golden paints but I have the um, sort of heavy body tube paints. But I wanted something that was a little bit like the acrylic ink. So do I just, do I just do that? Oh, hold on, what's happening? <laughs> okay, oh yeah, it's sealed up, so it's a good thing we looked. Let's pop that back on, and then if we just open up this bit, let's just see. I may well go over the top here, just squeeze a little bit out, just to have a look at it. Ooh. Don't want to waste it. <laughs> Golden paints are quite expensive actually. And this little one was, where was it, five pounds something? It was quite expensive. But as I only want it for details, I'm just gonna get a little brush. Um, I just want it for fine details or oh, little highlights on my paintings. And this is actually just what I was looking for. Yeah, this has the feel of the acrylic ink, but I think, because I usually use the white FW acrylic ink, like the ones we just looked at, to do fine details. And sometimes I'll use it on top of watercolour or gouache or even acrylic gouache. Yeah, these flowing paints are really good for detail and 
As I said, I usually use the FW acrylic ink for that, but sometimes it's not really opaque enough. Um, but this one seems really good. So it's got the consistency of the FW acrylic ink, but it's got more covering power. <laughs> it's got more opacity. So I'm really liking that. That is just what I wanted. So I'm glad I discovered that. Right, let's see if we've got space on this paper. <laughs> this is going to be a bit more of a haphazard swatch session, I think. So this is the Winsor & Newton Professional Acrylic Potter's Pink. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of that up there. Um, as I said in the actual art haul video, I have had this on my wish list on Jackson's for so long. Why can't I get that lid on? <laughs> and they've been out of stock uh, for months and months. And the date that they were expecting it in kept going back. It kept being put back and... Um, I kept checking back and it was still out of stock and then suddenly the other week it was back in stock so I pounced and got it because I love the Potter's Pink watercolour. They do a really nice Potter's Pink watercolour and also the Schminkaradam version is really nice too. I have both of them but I don't have a Potter's Pink acrylic paint. Um, it's an interesting colour because it's quite subtle. You can see it's not really very opaque. When it's brushed out, you get this lovely sort of muted vintage pink. Not dissimilar in some ways to the Ash Rose Holbein. I think I said at the time, didn't I, that that looks a bit like a potter's pink. But yeah, it's quite transparent and it's not a strong colour, but it's really lovely, sort of muted vintage kind of earthy colour. So I'm glad I have that. Um, be interesting to see what I can do with that in my canvas paintings. Right, I think we've only got two things left to have a look at. We're nearly at the end. I think this is probably my longest video ever. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs> so we have the Triart Sludge. Um, this one is the thick acrylic and this one is the thin acrylic. So if you listen, that one is much more liquidy. Um, whereas yeah, that one feels really like a heavy body kind of paint. So basically this is acrylic that is made from 100% recycled pigments harvested from the washing process. Um, you can use it as an economical alternative to gesso when a darker base is required or as a neutral colour extender. So basically it's made from the waste products of the, um, the paint making industry, I guess. I mean, I actually, I know they're saying you can use it as gesso or as a neutral colour extender. I think it says the same on this one, yeah. But those two colours, are they not gorgeous? just together. <laughs> I mean, I would totally use these as acrylic colour. So I don't know why, I, oh, I guess this one has a lid like this because it's, oh, it's sealed up in there, because it's um, more of a high flow kind of, oh, hold on. Hmm. I thought that that was covered over. How do I get that out? I don't know, maybe we'll just dip the brush in at the moment and I'll figure out the lid later. Packaging is my nemesis. I always struggle <laughs> getting into packaging. Right, I'm just going to swatch wherever I have a space. So yeah, this is really like um, a very high flow kind of colour. Paint, should I say. Can you tell I'm a bit tired today? <laughs> I did a lot of editing. I edited all the footage I shot yesterday. Um, I did that yesterday evening and today I feel quite tired, but I'm really enjoying this. It's been so nice to sit here and just do such a huge swatching session. It's a bit of a tongue twister. But there you go, that could make a really nice base. 
and as they say you can mix it in with other paints other colors for example um, but yeah good neutral base quite a dark base and yes it's very high flow this one so I see why they have put it I can't get the lid back on <laughs> I told you packaging packaging and me we don't um, go together very well I think that's okay for now I'll sort that out later uh, this one I'm really excited to try because it looks like such a gorgeous ooh, teal colour. Right, now I've got it on my hands. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's a really thick one. Okay. Okay, what am I going to do with this? Um, I need a paintbrush that isn't wet. I'm going to just put that there. I'll be back in a second. Okay, let's not waste this. We're going to scrape it all off the lid and <laughs> get it into the pot. I'm loving, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. I'm loving the consistency of this one. I really like thick paint when I'm working on canvas. So this will be brilliant. Right. Pop that in the bin. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit out of the pot. Oh, it's super thick. Wow. And I am loving this colour. Let's see what it looks like when it's swatched out. Can you see? Am I fully on the screen properly? Yep. <laughs> oh, wow, that's nice. What a gorgeous colour. So it's like a really dark teal. It's quite green. Um, so beautiful though, just the kind of colour that I would love to use. What I'm going to do is actually just hold these up um, closely so you can see them properly. Let's get the lid back on that. I don't want that to start drying out. I've got it all over my hands now as well. That was a really messy one to open. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm trying to get it off my hands and I'm making it worse. <laughs> okay, we'll have to accept that that's how my hands are now. Okay, I'll bring this up and we'll have a look at it. So in this session, we've done the acrylic inks so that's what they look like um, undiluted and then diluted you get these lovely soft washes of color really like that um, this one was the tri art sludge the thin one so it's a kind of cappuccino ish kind of color maybe slightly darker than that um, and then we have the sennelier underneath here the sennelier abstract um, innovative acrylic it won't focus focus um, so that's underneath and layered on top with the golden high flow titanium white these three are the gorgeous liquitex colors parchment light pink and in dantherin blue um, and then we have this beautiful color which is looking really dark on screen but I hope you can see if I tilt it maybe be able to see that that is actually a really lovely dark teal so there we go oh and I forgot and there's the potter's pink so you can have a closer look at that I forgot we did that one in the space at the top there so there we go that concludes our enormous swatching session if you're still here at the end say I love a good swatching session in the comments section below and I'll know that you are one of the few who've probably stayed right to the end of this video. <laughs> anyway, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed filming it and I'll see you again soon in another video.